Hey, everybody. Welcome to Celebrating Act Two. Thanks for joining us. And as you can see, Art and I are with our favorite brain, brain whisperer, <laughs> Steve Campbell. Steve, Thank great you. to see you again. Welcome. Good to see you again. It's always good to see you. It's always special. So and it's good to be to seen. Me. Yeah. <laughs> good. Good. You know, Steve, maybe you could help out uh, with this a little bit. Uh, I, I think I know where you'll lead me, but you just have a way of, of, of putting stuff together. Um, I've, I and all of us have known some very successful people. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of their characteristics of a very successful person, at least that I found, is that they may have failed a dozen times before they succeeded, but we a only lot. see the successes. So if yeah. they've had like three or four major successes in their life, whether it be a writer, whether it be an inventor, whether it be an executive of, a, of an organization, uh, we don't see all the failures. No. Uh, but It's not the American way. Right. And when we're caught up in our own failure, uh, uh, most of us have learned to get it behind us. Uh, but maybe you can give some hints for people who really get down on themselves yeah. and how to, as I share said in uh, what was the movie, snap out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, how to maybe. Moonstruck. Uh, yeah. Uh, how, yeah. how we can uh, snap out of it. Yeah. yeah. Well, let me start with a little uh, story of myself. Between 1983 and 1989, I worked in hospitals. And this is when hospitals were just going crazy with all sorts of merges and stuff. So I lost my jobs five different times. You lose your job once, that could be devastating. Five different times can be horrible. And... Um, it not only is hard financially, but it's hard on how you feel about yourself. You feel pretty defeated, and then you have to walk in and do these interviews and pretend that you feel great and you're wonderful, and you don't. And so Mary, my wife, bought me a book called When Smart People Fail by Carol Hyatt and Linda Gottlieb. And what it talks about is what people do when they fail. I'm reminded of Abraham Lincoln. His first business failed when he ran for the state legislature the first time he lost. When he tried to get into law school, he failed. His second business failed. His fiance died and he had a breakdown. When he ran for the Speaker of the House, he lost. When he sought to become elector, he was rejected. When he ran for Congress, he lost. When he ran for reelection, he lost. When he started a job for the Illinois land officer, he lost. When he ran for the Senate again, he lost. And then he became the greatest president the world and America has ever seen. So what do you do when you lose a lot? And this is what this book addresses, is what can you do when you lose? So let me give you some little tips and you can write down if you'd like, okay? First of all, sometimes, and I had to do this myself, you need to reinvent yourself. And there's four steps to that, okay? Number one, and you can write this down if you want, analyze what went wrong. So I remember when I lost my last job at a hospital, I was devastated. Not only was I devastated, but my mother-in-law was visiting. And I was going to have to go home sit in the living room with my mother-in-law there and tell Mary that I just lost my job again. She personally had had it with me. And because I was losing my job, she said, well, I can't trust this guy. So she went back to school and got her master's in education. And as a result of that, she became an award-winning elementary school teacher, elementary school principal, which she did for 20 years. So a lot of good things came out of this. But when I got lost my job, before I went home, I stopped by a coffee shop. This is way before Starbucks. And I asked myself for the first time, what do I really want to do? What do I love doing? What would I love doing if no one else knew? And the answer came out immediately, I love to teach. And that's when I began teaching. But it started with 
analyzing what went wrong. What went wrong was hospitals are very political. They have to be. You have the administration, you have the doctors, you have the nurses, you have everyone, and you have to keep them all happy. And that didn't work for me. So number two, reinterpret your story. Rather than saying, I got fired five times, rather than that, I said, I had five more opportunities to see that I don't fit in hospitals. Not a judgment call. I just said, this does not work for me. So I need to find something else. I need to reinterpret what's going on here. Then I had to relabel myself. Rather than being a materials manager and being very, very political, I said, you know what? I know I love to teach. When I was in college, etc., I found myself teaching Bible studies to churches all over the place. And I loved it. So I know I love to teach. So I began relabeling myself. And then I began looking at ways where I could teach. My first job came up when I found a little ad in our local newspaper saying, even instructor needed WordStar and computerized accounting. WordStar was even before WordPerfect. It was one of the first WordPerfect. And so by that time, I had learned to make really good resumes and really good interviewing. And I interviewed for the job, and she said, we need this. Can you do this? And I said, absolutely, yes. And I was a lie throughout the interview because I had no idea what she was talking about. But I wanted to teach. And lo and behold, they gave me the job. And what it was, I would do is I would spend the whole night at the school learning the program and then teach it the same evening. But you know what I was doing? I was doing what I loved. I was doing what was become a part of me. So... Let me give you some tips in terms of what to do when you fail. Number one, analyze what went wrong. Focus on what you can do, not what you can't. Okay? Number two, reinterpret your story. Rather than looking at what you have learned, look at what you are always learning. I'm always learning that I'm really good at teaching. I'm really good at presenting. And rather than seeing these things at barriers, you see these things at challenges that you were overcoming. Number three, relabel yourself. When I look at myself, I say, I am not a teacher. I am a person who teaches. Why is that really important? Because if I teach a bad lesson, which sometimes I do, I say to myself, I'm a bad teacher. That's not true. I just taught a bad lesson. Or I never say, I am a cook. I say, I am a person who cooks. Because if I cook something badly, I can simply say I screwed up someplace. But that's all right because that's how I learn. Most importantly, I do not say I am a speaker. I say to myself, I am a person who speaks. In other words, I give myself room to make mistakes without saying I'm really, really horrible. Now, let's look at what you do when you mess up, because part of growing is messing up. And I want to look at the work of Dr. E.P. Seligman, who wrote Learned Optimism and is an expert at positive psychology. In fact, you can look him up, Seligman, S-E-L-I-G-M-A-N-N, and find a wonderful website on positive psychology. Here's what he learned that optimists do when they mess up. Number one, they isolate it. So when I lost all those jobs, what I learned is, okay, I'm not good in politics. I'm not great in hospitals. And that's all right because I have switched over to being a teacher. 
I remember a dear friend who had some really hard things happen in his life. And I was there when he passed away finally. His wife had died of cancer, his daughter had died of cancer, and he was dying of cancer. And he said to me, and I'll never forget this, he said, Steve, I would not have chosen most of the things that have happened to me, but I would not trade them for the world. I can say the same thing. I have used all those firings in my presentations all over the world to help people who have failed just like I have by showing them but just because we fail doesn't mean we're a failure hmm. Thomas Edens was asked how it felt to fail in 999 times looking for the filament of a light bulb he said I did not fail 999 times I simply found 999 ways that didn't work dear listener that's what you're doing you're simply finding things that don't work so you can find things that do. Now, let's end with this. What do you do when you really mess up? What most of us do when we really mess up badly is we say, oh my goodness, how could I have been so stupid? And the problem with that is your brain pops up immediately and it says, oh, I know. Remember that dumb thing you did yesterday and that dumb thing you did a week ago, a month ago, a year ago? Remember how you were the slowest reader in the third grade? And you know what we do, dear listener? We almost get out of the list. And we start going down the list of all the dumb things we've ever done. Now, this is really important to understand. When you do that, your brain does not know that those memories happened a week ago a month ago, a year ago. The brain's recording them again, along with the feelings, but this time as if those mistakes happen today, right now, and then you're carrying that stuff around, and we all are doing that. That's why most of us just don't feel good about ourselves. So here's a new way to think. Number one, throw away the list. You don't need the list. You're done with the list. The list no longer needs to be a part of your life. And then number th two, use three wonderful words. You know what the words are? The next time. The next time I'll do it this way. The next time I'll do it that way. And when you say the next time, you're saying three things. Number one, you're saying there is a next time. How many next times do we get? Millions, trillions, gazillions. Number two, when you say the next time, you're saying, I'll never give up. And finally, number three, when you say the next time, you're saying, I'm still learning. I'm still growing. I'm still changing. Which means I'm still failing sometimes. I'm messing up sometimes. But that's an integral part of succeeding. I was driving to school one day, waiting for the light to change. A kid came up to me, looked at me, I looked at him, looked at my little Toyota. He had a very, 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 very fancy car. I don't know what kind it was, but it was very expensive. When the light changed, he went peeling out in front of me, roaring up the freeway, passing everyone in his big, fancy, expensive car. As I watched this, I had an epiphany. How many cars are already in front of him? Millions. How many cars are behind him? millions so maybe it's not a matter of how fast you get there maybe it's a matter of you going in the right direction but you know what even when you go in the right direction sometimes you just run out of gas sometimes you get a flat tire sometimes you even lose your way but you know what <laughs> you can buy some more gas. You can replace the tire. 
you can get a map. And what's so wonderful about the brain is the whole time the brain is just saying, okay, I believe you. Is it true? I don't even care. All I care about is what you tell me. So you say it, I believe it. You lock on to it, you know what I will do. I will do everything I can to make it true in your life. Wow. That's exciting. It is. Great advice. Thank you. Great advice. That's after 74 years of making a lot of mistakes and I'm still making them. Yes, isn't that wonderful? Because to paraphrase you, you have all these seconds of the day to do something right the next time. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Great advice. Thank you very much. Thank and uh, so if you fail, if at first you don't succeed and you don't succeed the next time and the next time, remember, there's a light bulb at the end of you keep trying. That's right. And uh, That's right. Steve Campbell, thank you for reminding us of that and giving uh, uh, us uh, things to think about to ease the pain of failure towards uh, the joy of success. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.